Uh, Mike McAllowitz wrote a wonderful book on this subject specifically for business owners, basically lighting a fire under people to pay closer attention to their their finances and their numbers. You don't need to be an expert, but you do need to pay attention. And I, I, I tell people financial health is just like your physical health. If you ignore yeah. it, it only goes downhill. Like yeah. You, you can't ignore your physical health and expect to get in better shape, get healthier. Nobody got six pack abs on accident, right? right. Right. And no, nobody has a flourishing, thriving business on accident. And if you don't, if you don't pay attention to your financial numbers, they will deteriorate. Yeah. And I think that's why I think it's one of the reasons I don't think it's the only reason, but I think it's one of the reasons why we have such a large failure rate in businesses. I mean, I don't remember the exact stats, but, um, you know, the majority of businesses fail within the first five years. And I think. I wish more of this was integrated into our school systems and teaching people how to understand finances and understand money. And um, even if they're not going to be a business owner, just running their personal lives, most people don't have a good relationship with money. I agree. And if you're family, if you're raised in a family that, that doesn't have a good relationship with money, typically you're going to end up following the same path subconsciously and then teaching your kids bad habits about money. Well, and the other part of that too is in a lot of households, and thankfully my household was not like this, but in a lot of households, money is only brought up when it's bad news. Like yeah. when somebody's lost their job or somebody spent too much money or we can't pay the bills or it's under stress and duress, that's when finances are brought up. So if that's how you were raised, by the time you're 21, 22, every conversation you've heard around money was when mom and dad were screaming at each other, or maybe be, maybe that's why mom and dad got divorced. Right. Fighting about money. I mean, that's, that's a big part of it, right? So if that's our context for financial discussions, it's no wonder that people don't like to talk about money. And again, that we can't afford to ignore it anymore. So I think a big step for people, whether you're a business owner or not, is just normalizing conversations about finances. Because if you have a question, if you're struggling with something, I guarantee you there's people in your circle that are struggling with the same thing. And there are right. probably people in your circle that might have experienced victory in that thing as well, can offer some help and some feedback. And in, in shoot, if, if you've experienced some victory, there's people in your circle that need to hear that story too. So I just think it's important for, for folks like you and I, Andy, to normalize conversations around money, finances, which obviously is a huge part of your, your business and my business, but it needs to go beyond just business conversations and, and people need to build some community, have people that can hold them accountable, ask difficult questions. Um, and you're right, it's a huge reason why businesses fail because businesses are often run as a hobby, not as a business. Yes, I swear we're gonna pull that out as a quote because <laughs> that is a, I mean, that's a great, great way to put it. Most people run their business like a hobby. And I came from the, so years ago, I was a mechanic, worked for multiple companies, and then I went into real estate. And you see it a ton in real estate. People don't treat it as a business, they treat it as a hobby. It's like, oh, we'll go sell some houses here and there. But like, they don't ever operate from a place of like a business owner, um, which I think really holds them back. And I think there's a lot of community. I think that you can find a lot of community around talking around money. I think most people just avoid it. It's like, it's like putting the dirty laundry in your closet. You just don't want to mm -hmm. open it up because they just don't want to face it. They already know they're in trouble with it. But I think it's just a matter of like understanding that you have to start somewhere. And I'm not an investor by any means. Like this is my, my experience comes from running businesses and making bad mistakes and financially, you know, sometimes it's things have worked out. Sometimes it hasn't, but I know that it's typically been, typically been looking at profit and losses and knowing where we're at and knowing where we're going to go. Yeah. And it's, it, you're right. I think there are venues to have those conversations, but it is vulnerable. Yeah. Those are vulnerable conversations. But I think if we're going to grow as individuals and grow as business owners, we have to be vulnerable. We have to be willing to say, I'm struggling with this. I, this isn't going well. Somebody else has again struggled with the same thing. You don't you don't have time to make all the mistakes yourself. Learn from other people's mistakes. And I think there's a our ego gets us in a lot of trouble because we want to pretend like everything is going well. And to have that that vulnerability and just being somewhat, you know, 
naked about your business saying, ah, like we cannot hold good employees or yeah. we, our debt is out of control or whatever it is. Um, just, just putting that out there uh, because your, your employees already know where you're weak uh, your customers right. probably know where you're weak. Um, yeah. Why not just, just put that, some of those stuff, some of those things out in the open and then you start chipping away because you, you can't solve a problem that you pretend doesn't exist. <laughs>